everyone and welcome to Newegg TV. My name is Paul and today I'm in Las Vegas. Uh, the point you're watching this video is going to be a little over a week from now. But basically we're here at the AMD Tech Day event, uh, which is taking place on January 5th, where they've been giving a lot of details about their newest APU. The code name for the APU is Kaveri, and you're probably going to be hearing a lot of that word because it uh, actually applies to a wide array of products from AMD. But uh, I've been taking notes using only the latest in technology, a pen and paper, so I'm just going to kind of go over some of the details that they've been sharing with us for now. First of all, first of all if you're not familiar with what an APU is, uh, it's pretty important for this today's lesson. Uh, that's because it takes a CPU and a GPU and combines them both together in the same chip. AMD's been doing this for quite some time. They had their FM1 platform, they've had their FM2 platform. Uh, they're now working on FM2 Plus, uh, which is the Kaveri platform, at least if you're going to be going the desktop route. And uh, an APU, at least their goal for this APU, was an APU that could deliver 30 frames per second in GPU-intensive tasks. So we're talking AAA title games such as Battlefield 4, which AMD has partnered with, which is why you often hear Battlefield 4 mentioned when you're talking about AMD graphics cards or their APUs. Uh, they have achieved that. You can play Battlefield 4 at 1080 on medium settings with these latest Kaveri APUs, and they're showing a very big bump in performance, particularly if you compare it to last generation or first generation APUs that AMD came out with. Uh, but basically the five points that they wanted to hit in releasing this GPU to the public to make it uh, useful, so, so, so to speak. Uh, GPU prowess, of course, we already mentioned that one. The audio experience, and this, this is the first of the uh, AMD APUs that includes GCN architecture, so it also has a lot of the stuff that you might have heard us talk about when Hawaii launched uh, an AMD's R9, 290, and 290X series graphics cards. So with these APUs, you actually get access to AMD's true audio technology. If you're not familiar with that, you can check out our original video, but basically it's uh, pre-processing audio stuff, so a lot of the types of activities that might have actually hit your CPU pretty hard in the past for uh, rendering certain elements like reverberation in a large room or uh, many, many different audio sources at the same time. Uh, you now have access to that with an APU. Also, the ability to enclose these APUs in a small form factor, that's really been the trend as far as computers goes when you're specifically talking about desktops. Uh, computers have been getting smaller and smaller, so the ability for these APUs to easily drop into these small form factor systems. 4K support, of course, is the future. We're hearing that all over the place at CES this year. 4K televisions are actually becoming more affordable and more accessible to the average consumer versus just your early adopters. So. 4K support is, of course, there right out of the gate, particularly if you're going with a display port. And then keeping all of this available with a sub-$200 price point. Uh, and the flagship that uh, they're releasing or announcing today is going to be the A10 7850K, which I'm just double-checking my notes to make sure I have that right. Yes, A10 7850K is uh, the flagship processor for this line. Now. When it comes to the actual design and implementation of an APU, there's a lot of work that goes into it. And uh, what AMD talked about at the presentation they were giving t today is basically the hard work that goes into making things easy. And uh, that specifically comes to, first off, the, uh, the engineering that goes into the architecture of these uh, APUs in general, but also uh, it has to go hand in hand the hardware as well as the software. So software is developers are getting a huge boost uh, from this new architecture, this heterogeneous system architecture, or HSA. Um, which allows stuff, for instance, like Mantle, which we've already talked about, uh, a new API that allows people to, or allows developers to create games that will play much more easily with the uh, GCN architecture that's integrated here. Uh, and then also, of course, these are developed on a 20 nanometer manu manufacturing process technology. So by bringing that down, uh, they're keeping things uh, power efficient, which is another big push for this. So those are kind of the touch points they're working with. And spe specifically when it comes to power design, they're designing these APUs to fit into a wide range of uh, implementations. So from your 15 to 30 watt servers to embedded solutions to notebooks all the way up to your desktops at 95 watts. So 15 watts all the way up to 95 watts is what they were showing us in the demonstration, which is a pretty huge range of wattage. But uh, at any of those wattage points or those power points, depending on uh, the implementation for the APU, you're going to get not only maximum performance, but maximum uh, power savings as well. It's going to actually be making use of all of those power cycles with the system as you use it. Uh, compute cores is another term that you're going to hear tossed around by AMD. 
since they are taking CPU and GPU, which had traditionally been more separate and distinct, the merging together of both of those elements of the processor is really what they've been working on here. And uh, we'll get into that in just a second. But compute cores is their name for uh, processor cores, but uh, it's, it goes a little bit wider than that, so they've decided to uh, sort of give it a new name to distinguish that from the traditional core count that you might have seen in the past. And when you're looking at these new Kaveri uh, APUs, you're going to see an overall core count such as 12 uh, for the uh, 810-7850K, for example, and four of those are CPU compute cores, eight of those are GPU compute cores. Of course, there's many, uh, many more elements that go into that, but that's sort of the way they've kind of simplified things so that when they're presenting them to the consumer, you guys can get an easier idea of uh, how all of those are, are configured and which ones are going to be the best for whatever use case scenario you're going to want to use it for. So to summarize their uh, uh, presentation that they gave us, redesign cores, new HSA features, uh, heterogeneous system architecture, which uh, I didn't tell you the details on that, but basically they're allowing, for instance, the CPU and the GPU to both access the same memory bank. Uh, and that is what is known as HUMA, Heterogeneous Unified Mem Memory Architecture. There's lots of acronyms going on and being thrown around out there, but uh, that's a huge, huge benefit, uh, specifically from a programming standpoint, because you act actually had to program around certain uh, limitations of that by using the GPU for, use for doing certain tasks, using the CPU for, using for uh, accomplishing other tasks. They both have their place. The CPU is better at some things, the GPU is better at other things, and uh, with this uh, Kaveri launch, they've really brought both of these together, so you can, again, get the maximum performance for both of those, no matter what you're doing. And we have some demos to share with you in just a moment to kind of give you guys a better idea of that. Uh, heterogeneous queuing is another thing, so that's uh, sort of bringing the queuing in together for both the CPU and the GPU. And uh, platform atomics is the specific name, specifically C11 atomics. And that is uh, the uh, name for the CPU and the GPU accessing the same resources, such as system memory. Uh, for HSA applications, uh, what type of applications does this actually benefit? Parallel workloads is uh, one of the hugest things, and that is where uh, you get so much performance from the GPU. Uh, but for instance, natural UI and gesture support, which we're seeing a lot more um, with uh, touch-enabled or uh, computers that uh, can actually sense your motions that you're making with your hands, so it's sort of a new way of interacting with, the, uh, with your computer, which can often be very CPU intensive, and uh, it's very adept at that. Biometric recognition, so uh, logging into your computer using a finger fingerprint, facial recognition, uh, or voice recognition, and uh, it's also very adept at that. Augmented reality beyond HD functionality, so not just watching HD content, but actually creating uh, HD content and media and interacting with it. And then, of course, probably it's something that you guys are most interested in if you're watching our channel, is gaming. Um, and it all kind of circles back around to that because the cool thing about the APUs is so many of the features that they've developed to help gaming, because GPU compute has become uh, much more prevalent in recent years, that also helps out uh, the GPU compute side. But for gaming, of course, you're gonna have access to Mantle since this is the first ever APU that includes GCN architecture. Uh, also true audio, as mentioned before, and then of course the GCN architecture that ties it all together. And another really cool thing they announced is if you buy an A10, you get Battlefield 4 for free at least as of right now. Uh, we're going to post details to that in the video description uh, if you're interested. Um, but as of now, they're telling us that Battlefield 4 comes free along with the purchase of an A10 APU, which is a really, really nice little uh, bonus add-on. You're talking about getting a, a powerful GPU as well as your CPU at a sub-$200 price point and a, a $50, $60 Battlefield 4 game on top of that. Okay, next up we're going to do some demos, and those are all behind me, so we've been wandering around and trying some of those out, just to name a few of them and kind of how they're demonstrating the advantages of the APUs. Uh, first off, we had an audio demonstration from Nuance over there. Uh, it's currently using a software plat platform, but basically it's recognize the ability to recognize your speech to ignore other uh, things that are going on in your environment so you can say a voice command and tell your computer to turn on or something like that. That's what they're working on over there. Again, currently software, but they're planning to port that over to the true audio, uh, specifically the DSP cores that are dedicated to processing audio. So you can have that functionality and it also wouldn't be a CPU or a GPU hit. 
Another thing to mention is, of course, Rabbits. That's right over there. It's a bit of software, and they're demonstrating multi-stream video sharing and chat. So basically, they have a bunch of demos going on. They have a bunch of simulated people who are logging in and chatting all at the same time. Not only is that a big uh, uh, amount of input coming from the network side, but also the ability to take each of those individual video streams, render them all concurrently, uh, they have not been able to do, particularly with something like an APU prior to now. Um, for video games, we've had several demos. Thief, of course, is another one of the launch titles that AMD has been working with. So Thief actually has a launch date of February 25th. If you're not already aware, stay tuned for that one. But they're showing uh, another one of the gaming levels over there. So it looks like an awesome game, especially if you're into stealth. Tomb Raider and Battlefield 4 are excellent games that came out in 2013. And uh, those demos are also going on behind us. Playing at 1080, using just the APU, no discrete graphics card, medium settings, and a nice smooth 30 frames per second or above frame rate. So even the higher uh, GPU intensive games, you can still play on the APUs. Uh, we also had some 4K content on display right over there. So via DisplayPort 1.2, you can have a single cable powering display uh, at 60 hertz, which is really awesome. Uh, again, that's going to depend on the motherboard implementation, so bear in mind if you get an APU, you might want to look into a DisplayPort enabled one, particularly if you're going to be going for a 4K monitor. Uh, we also had an iFinity demonstration, the APUs can do iFinity right out of the box. Again, that's going to depend a little bit on the video outs on your motherboard of choice, but uh, they were showing Civilization V across three screens playing just from an A10 7850K. Uh, and then lastly, a really cool demonstration was small form factor PCs. Uh, which uh, Ed from AMD has actually does a little bit of a, a side hobby of his, but he puts those together and brings them here for display. So we had a really cool briefcase system that he assembled, um, which was just sort of a unique design and kind of enclosing all of those elements. He also had a completely passively cooled system, um, which is in a small black box, which um, got a little bit warm on the outside, but considering the amount of power he was getting out of it, um, to have a completely passively cooled system, the only moving parts in that system was the Blu-ray drive. Uh, that was really cool as well. And then also, uh, he had a larger system which was demonstrating um, a small form factor PC, but also with the discrete graphics card in it, and that was powering a, uh, another Ifinity display over on that side. So. Tons of awesome demonstrations going on here. A lot of potential for Kaveri uh, that we're seeing. Um, again, you guys are probably going to be most interested in the desktop parts that they're coming out with, but they're going to be implementing this across the board, whether you're talking about tablets, laptops, or again, uh, they're going to they work with enterprise uh, stuff, so they're going to be doing server level, uh, server grade equipment, and that sort of thing. So lots of exciting things going on here at CES 2014. But thank you for watching this video, and if you'd like to, subscribe to our new ATV YouTube channel for more videos just like it, and we'll see you all next time.